to my channel Living Around. I'm Irene and this channel is all about tropical plants and how to put together a nice tropical garden. In this episode, I'm going to talk about hardscaping. Hardscape is basically anything that's not alive in the garden. These are like your walls, the rocks, the footpath. And hardscaping is critical to create a beautiful garden. If you think of like your plants as the yin, then hardscape is like the yang. That was just a butterfly, did you see that? Anyway, so the yin and yang, they need to come together to balance each other out. They would be like, um, together they could form a beautiful dance, let's say. So in this episode, I'm going to go through with you my thinking about the design and the choice of materials and why I did what I did. And we'll talk about aesthetics as well as functionalities. So in 2020, I was very much stuck at home, just like you. In fact, we're still under lockdown now and I haven't been out for four weeks. But the point is my brain went into overdrive thinking every day how I could create the perfect garden. And that's my husband with his very loud car. And I knew the answer is not gonna be in buying more plants or getting my wish list plants. It's about rather kind of like creating a look and this is very much then depending on putting in a structure, a structure that my plant could later cling on. So I will be sharing with you um, my journey, the thought journey that went into the design, the selection of the materials, and also with the functionality and the aesthetics role that they have. We will cover first big things like the walls, footpath, flooring, and then also things like doorwares, doors, staircase, and even raised beds and planted boxes. So let's get started. Walls. Why are walls important? The word walls has its origin in the meaning enclosure. That's right. So then garden is supposed to give you a sense of being enclosed, a place of refuge, your own little cozy place. And without that kind of vertical element, it's hard to achieve that enclosure kind of feeling. So that's why walls, I feel, is uh, very important. Of course, you can achieve this with other things like hedges, um, tall plantings, but I always like something like a wall as a backdrop for other plants. Second reason, for the wall is for my philodendrons and climbing anthuriums. These things, they just love to climb and I'm kind of tired to have them sitting in a pot and spilling out. Uh, I know moss pole really work. They work beautifully, the plants love it. But the thing is, I feel like they are quite ugly. So I don't want to see a lot of moss pole in my garden. And so, yeah, these walls then. So actually, I did have a wall to begin with, but I didn't quite like the look. It had stones at the bottom, concrete in the middle, and then grills at the very top. And you know, that was kind of a very chaotic, messy look for me. It looked very much like a fence that's dividing me and the neighbor. So that's why I put up a new wall. This is just purely for aesthetics reason. In designing the wall, I look to many things for inspiration. I particularly love the Italian, uh, the Roman ruins, the crumbly bricks and walls and stones. They just come together so haphazardly and so nice. I was also inspired by Gaudi, um, the Barcelona architect. And yeah, I have just too many things going on in my head. And anyway, so I sat down and drew it on a piece of paper and then I showed it to my contractor and I'm very glad he didn't faint because it was a lot of ideas that was mashed up together because I wanted something truly unique. Anyway, at the end of the day, what I had on paper and what I have put up on the wall, um, it's not quite the same because I also did modifications while he was building the wall. So yeah, uh, shout out to my contractor who's been very, very patient with me. So this wall is about 12 feet high, I think. And then for that height of the wall, you do need to put in proper foundation and also steel bars behind it to make sure everything stays in place. So don't do this on your own. Engage a professional who will do it properly for you.
fabric as the core material because I felt like they look really warm, evokes a nice feeling of uh, romantic, historical elegance. And so, and they are also a lot cheaper than um, wood. Wood was the other thing that I considered. But then wood would have been good, durable wood would be just far too expensive. I think the price would be like three times more. So brick then it is much more durable, looks really good and also is cheaper. For those who really would like to consider the option of wood, and I have this also in my backyard, and let me just share that, yes, they look gorgeous, especially if you could get the aged old ones that is full of character, which is also what I did here. But the thing was, I um, trusted the seller completely when he told me that it is hardwood, but within a couple of weeks, the termites were already on it. So if you do want to get wood, invest in very good wood that is highly durable and make sure you also try and coat it with something that's protective or a varnish or something that repels termite. But whatever you do, I feel like wood, it can never be as durable and uh, maintenance free as say, let's say a concrete or a brick. So do proceed at your own caution. And some tip also, if you do use wood, never let it go down all the way to the ground. I wanted that kind of full effect from the top to the bottom. And the thing was the termites then could access the wood very quickly that way. They, they smell the wood from the bottom. So if you have to do it, then make sure the wood starts from somewhere a few inches, maybe one or two feet up after the ground. Uh, second tip on wood is I have used here, if you notice at the top, I have made the edges not straight. So they were like irregular random shape to give it a more natural feel to it. Yeah. So I picked brick as the core element, but brick was not the only thing on the wall. The, one of the new elements I added during construction was I suddenly had the idea of using ventilation blocks or breeze blocks. These things were wildly popular in the 50s and 60s. And you, if you have seen old houses in the tropics, uh, they use them a lot, but then they kind of fell out of fashion for the next 50 years, uh, come back now recently. So ventilation blocks, I have used them here for a few purposes. One is to break up the aesthetic so that it's not just a solid, boring old brick wall. And secondly, it allows for air and light to come through. So in terms of the light, I have a pretty shady uh, garden as it is because I have tall trees here that's got high canopies. So I wanted that extra light to come in. The Vendi blocks allows that. And also the wind factor, right? If you are blocking everything up, then the wind flow wouldn't be as much as, as I could have enjoyed now in the garden. And also secondly, well not secondly, I think it's thirdly now, I think a solid wall would just be too, too much like, like a wall and I, I am on good terms with my neighbors so I do want to also have some kind of a uh, you know not such a solid solid wall per se if you know what I mean so the venti blocks allows that little glimpse of each other now and then another element I've added to the wall is this piece of nothingness which is uh, like just cement um, okay, so this was not originally in the design. In the original design, I wanted to put rocks here. And so while the workers were preparing this piece of area to install the rocks, I thought, hey, just leave it like that. It looks pretty good as it is. So now I've got a pile of rocks there um, rotting somewhere. I've decided to leave it like that because I thought it was quite a nice contrast that I have a lot of bricks and then this smooth texture uh, just to balance things out. I felt like if I had put on rocks there, everything might just get too busy. And so now this nice concrete cement of nothing, I have uh, planted some creepers at the bottom and I hope one day they would creep out and if you could use your imagination this Rafi Rodora would then come out like long fingers. I do have a stack horn there right now. Oh something just fell in my eye. Yeah I do have a stack horn there now if you could see so kind of like it's a bit of a feature wall here too for me. 
I've also put up a new wall here made of ventilation blocks and I've mixed and matched with different patterns hopefully still looking cohesive and nice so the reason for this is two for one for aesthetics reason I hope you can agree it gives a nice old-school vibe but more importantly it is to really play the function of hiding a lot of my mess behind yes I'm revealing to you too I have messy corners in my garden stuff that I don't know or haven't figured out where to put yet and also it's important to give um, privacy to the room that's kind of behind the screen so yes the function of this wall is really to look pretty and to hide the not pretty stuff so how high can your wall be or should your wall be well, the practical answer could be whatever the local council approves it to be at. But then if you want to think about the more designer sort of answer, the landscaper view, well, there is this rule. It's called the law of the law of significant enclosure. That's right. And what the law is saying is that the height of the wall should be at least one third of the length or the width of the garden that you have so for example if the width of your land is about 30 feet that a 10 feet wall will be ideal to achieve that enclosed filling and last tip before you put up the wall do talk with your neighbor because this is after all a shared wall and it's very important that you're aligned on how high it is and how it looks like because you know it's a neighbor and you want to be nice to each other. And now we take a look at floorings and footpaths in the garden. So in terms of material, what you see here now, these are called aggregates. Aggregates are these rough cut rocks, which is readily available. And the good thing about it is that they are fairly cheap. So this is a good option if you're on a budget. Um, however, they are quite sharp, so kind of like a little regret that I had. In terms of the aesthetics and how they look, they're perfectly fine. But then this is something that you don't expect to be able to run around bare feet on. So unlike pebbles, pebbles is something that I have put in my backyard. Pebbles are smooth and so you will have no problem running bare feet on them if you have more to spend and you like to have the option of being running barefoot in your garden, I would, I would suggest pebbles, but they are quite a lot more expensive than these aggregates here. So we've just spent some time talking about materials for the flooring. Now let's talk about the footpath. It is nice to create a little footpath so that you could help one to or guide a person to navigate around your garden. And the choice of material here is slates. These are rocks basically, which have been cut out into thin pieces. And I felt that they can look quite good along with pebbles. Another option that you could think about um, is putting bricks or wood. Uh, an example that I have here downstairs, these looks like wood but actually they are fake so they are like full wood the reason i didn't use real wood is because i'm quite scared of termites attacking the wood like how they have attacked my wall actually so i thought that this is a really good option it looks but it looks like wood but actually it's made of cement or concrete i'm not sure but even the colors and the textures they got it quite quite real so one tip about footpath, what kind of direction or, or lines should you have it at? There is two options. One, you could just create straight lines. But what straight line does is that it gives you a quite a formal feel to the garden. And because I like mine to be more natural, so I try to incorporate curves as much as I can. You see the things that's around me now, it's looking quite curvy. This is actually a rectangular piece of land. I've just organized it so that the footpath fools the eye into thinking this is a, a natural non-rectangle shape. And also downstairs at the front here, you could see that I also try to incorporate some curves as much as I can into this footpath. So 
How far should the steps be apart? This is really up to your stride and what you're comfortable with. So before you set them down permanently, I suggest you just walk on the path and kind of figure out what is this normal stride for you and just design it for yourself. After all, you're the person that's gonna spend the most time in your garden. And once that is done, take the equal distance, then it's a good idea also for uniformity, consistency sake, that they are equally paced then throughout the garden. So I used to have pretty lush planting in this corner of the garden. Then I made the big move to rip it all out and replaced it by a feature, a door feature here. As you can see, this is very much like the Ballini's door, inspired by the Ballini's door. The construction of this is quite a massive affair. These columns uh, made of concrete was far more complicated to make than I had ever imagined. And yeah, I did engage professional workers to do this. some modification to this door and doorway so the frame as you could see it has a hole in it and I thought well this is a lovely place to put a plant but I've just noticed now the plant is quite dry so we probably forgot to water it so remember to water your plant if you put it in a very unique or special place secondly this door is smaller than a normal size door this door is uh, six feet so you can tell that I am not yet six feet. The reason I made a smaller door is because the garden is not very big and I wanted things to be in proportion. If I've made it bigger, then it might be just too big and too overpowering for this small garden that I have. I tried also to add some little quirky, unique thing to the steps here. And I have chosen to use some mosaic. So these mosaics are green and I went through a whole lot of thinking about what to put. Eventually just these then simple geometrical design. Does it remind you of anything? That's right. We thought it kind of like reminded us of ketupat. This rice that we eat in Malaysia and Indonesia. Now let's see what's beyond these doors.
still, it brings us to another part of my garden, which is, so we just came from the backyard. Now we're going to the front yard. And yes, I've also installed this spiral staircase so that there is a flow between the back and the front. And in deciding what to put in there, I mull over so many decisions, whether a straightforward staircase or a spiral. In the end, I opted for the spiral staircase because I felt like it looks like a cascading water waterfall when it's painted in blue. And that's why I painted it in blue. And also the blue gives a really nice pop against the primarily brick wall that I have here. So this is why it's in blue. A lot of people have asked me, why did you pick blue? It's very unusual. And then the spiral staircase also gives me so much opportunity in the future to hang plants upon it. Like um, maybe this is an example, but if you could use your imagination that I would start to have lots and lots of these and there would be lots of greens hugging the staircase in the future. I want to share more about the design and the making of this floor. I had a hard time thinking whether I should put tiles or mosaic or even use terracotta. But in the end, I opted for something that simple and that's just using primarily concrete. The reason for that is concrete is easy to maintain. I don't have to worry about cleaning the grooves in between if I have to use tiles or mosaic. And also it is cheaper. And when it comes to the design, this design here that you see is inspired by the Kenyan Tree of Life. So I am from Sarawak, Borneo. And so this is a design that's very much inspired by that Kenyan Tree of Life. There is a legend and myth about it and you can go read about it. Also, it's paying tribute to a good friend of mine, Jackie, whose hotel is called the Batek Boutique Hotel that was located in Kuching and it didn't make it through the pandemic. The facade of the hotel looks kind of like these spirals, so it is also my tribute to, to her hotel, which I had a lot of fun in. So yeah, hope you like it. And I opted for three circles because um, Remember the odd number? Anything that's in odd number will look more unified. So here on this spot, originally it was a footpath. Then I decided, you know, why have a footpath when I could hack it and make more space for the garden? So I did all of that away. And then I've created, put in place a, you could call it a planter box or a raised bed, but it is essentially an area for more planting. And I've decided to put, um, a raised bed because then I could put better soil on it. It would be difficult for me kind of to dig underneath. It's a lot more work and I'm not sure what I'll be digging, probably hurting the roots of my trees. So a raised bed for also better soil that I could put on it. How did I do that? Well, I took the um, metal fence that I got rid of in front, cut it in half and then recycle it as a backbone for this bricks to then stick on in front and yeah originally it was uh, red, red bricks that I put on and then later on I coated it with the cement glue this thing has become my absolute favorite to give it a more consistent color with also the the flooring which is gray so also plant the boxes that's also gray so yeah you could also do your DIY, you just have to get creative with the materials. And, and if you check out over here, there's also, I ran out of bricks at some point and then I used this leftover rocks and stones that I found while trying to dismantle a portion of the wall. And then we just uh, glue it together too using cement. So that's it. Thank you very much for staying with me right to the end. And there's a little reward for you. This is my birthday week, so I'm doing a giveaway. Also same giveaway on my Instagram. Uh, a local Malaysian viewer, you get a chance to win this plant. This is a Glorissum. And this is a handmade basket uh, by a lady called Teresa in Sarawak. And you can get this. This is then an international audience would win this basket. All you have to do is just Leave me a comment below, any comment below and then you're in the running. 
If you've enjoyed this video, do click subscribe and share with others. And if you'd like to support me and my channel, you can do so. You can buy me coffee and then the link is at the description below. So until then, till my next video, adios, goodbye.